Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Luma World podcast. Uh, today, I have a much wiser Sajid with me. Uh, this is Raman. Uh, she's uh, interning as part of uh, her major in industrial psychology, and she is uh, working with Luma on a lot of content creation and bright ideas that can help us to um, expand our reach and share more content with you. Um, today, we have a really special guest with us. Uh, Ms. Asavri Kane of Padcare Lab. She's a founding member and she's also looking after the research and development vertical and she also happens to be a marketing enthusiast. Welcome Asavri. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about Asavri, she has a bachelor's degree in microbiology and a master's in biotechnology. So um, anything to do with the, the green world is probably under her domain. Um, and she's got a vision to contribute to a sustainable world. So something that I'm sure she shares with a lot of us. Um, and she, along with her team, is focusing on developing innovative and user-centric products. Um, she's here with us today to discuss an essential part of uh, the processes that go into waste management of sanitary pads and uh, what are its effects on our environment. So thank you, Asavri, for joining us and uh, some great work that you're doing through Padk Labs. So let me just dive right in and ask you so what's the story behind pad care labs what is it that uh, got you thinking this is what i want to do uh, so firstly thank you for having me here uh, so uh, there's ajinkya dharia who is the founder and so there are two stories one i'll of course uh, is something that started from him so i'll start with it and then i'll let you know how i came into picture so Ajinkya Dharia, he was into his final year of mechanical engineering and he was doing his project in the waste management sector, uh, wherein uh, uh, during one of his visits to the uh, landfills, he saw a waste picker, you know, manually segregating the used sanitary napkins from a pile of dry waste. And that was something that struck him and he was like that this should not happen. You can't just touch someone else's sanitary napkins using your bare hands. I mean, that is very unhygienic. Um, yeah. That is when the engineer inside him, you know, was like, let me try and introduce technology in this case. Uh, so he spoke to a lot of people because he was a guy. He didn't know what kind of problems are there, what kind of uh, material it is and so on and so forth. So he spoke to his relatives. He spoke to his friends. He tried to understand what all issues are being faced. Uh, how do you usually dispose these sanitary napkins? And he came to know that, you know, the... Uh, Current practices are extremely bad. There is no proper uh, guideline set or anything. You just so what we basically do is that we wrap it in the newspaper and we put it in the driveways that we have in in our uh, homes, and yeah. then it is collected from from, from the waste by the waste pickers, and they have to later manually segregate it. So these yeah. are usually then dumped into landfills or are incinerated. That is the common shape. Um, right. But again the incineration or landfilling is extremely dangerous. So if you are landfilling it, uh, and these are the real figures, it takes 800 years for a single sanitary napkin to be completely disposed if you're landfilling it. So wow. you can imagine every single sanitary napkin that was ever manufactured on Earth is still on Earth. Wow. And we use like, you know, almost 12 to 15 sanitary napkins uh, monthly. So imagine the kind of bulk dump that is, you know, being dumped every single month. Yeah. Uh, and if you're incinerating it, of course, you're burning a thing like sanitary napkin, which has polymers, which has plastic, which has cellulose above 800 degrees Celsius. So imagine the kind yeah. of smoke, the kind of emissions it would be generating. Um, yeah. So he knew that, you know, something needs to be done in an environment friendly way. Um, and me being a... Uh, so when I moved to Pune, I was living in a hostel for two years and incineration in, uh, is something that is usually there in many hostels here. So that was my first encounter with an incinerator and I was like, Kuch naya dik rai, let me try. So I just went there and I put my sanitary napkin and it just, you know, the smoke came out and the whole corridor was black. And I was like, what is this? And literally everybody was like, oh, kisi ne to incinerator use kiya hai, aaj kisi ko to periods a gaye. And parents being a taboo is difficult. Yeah. So even though it was a girls' hostel, uh, you know that thing came up here. Uh, so something of that sort happened. And then eventually it took a lot of time for the smoke to you know get out of the corridor. And till then everyone was extremely frustrated. Um, so <laughs> that uh, it it was bad. It was bad. I mean, imagine Raman, maybe you could imagine being in a situation like that. 
yeah so eventually i was like no, no there needs to be a better solution um so i met ajinkya uh, a couple of months after he started with pad care i think around 3 4 months later when he had just initiated everything um and that is uh, wherein i joined him too and then we developed uh, these products we had other team members also joining in there was shrinivas ade he is also one of the founding members uh, so the three of us were into developing this machine the process and everything okay it. so that is how padke started the journey been when when did you guys start off and um, how many years has it been yeah so we started in july 2018 um, and almost two and half years went into okay. r&d of course lockdown took us back but then uh, we commercialized last year and we are currently serving across four cities in india okay so i mean a lot of points that you covered here are things that were going to be part of my list of questions to you right one thing is how is the, i mean um, i mean menstrual hygiene and you know sanitary pads is essentially Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a female problem. It's not a problem. The disposal of it is a problem, but it's it's something that as men we may never be able to relate to. Um, you know what is the essential way to dispose it of, right? Uh, but a lot of the other problems that you mentioned, like this takes 800 years to di- you know dispose of. It's like a baby diaper, right? It's it's made of maybe similar materials. Takes that long to dispose of, and a lot of people that that we've spoken to. has got the same thing like a disposable diaper takes 400 to 800 years to if you incinerate it there are a lot of polymers in that etc so how big a challenge was it to overcome you know the taboo aspect of things while you were getting started okay um so very rightly you said uh, regarding the taboo which is there and yes initially it was extremely difficult so we started off with survey so we used to go to talk to people that you know uh, so we we targeted different uh, hostels because we would get a lot of audience there young audience there um, so you know we used to go there and we used to ask them you know what kind of problems do you face during their periods and you know they used to get so shy they would start giggling they would start looking here and there and they used to like are why are you asking me this this is not something that you know i am supposed to discuss with anyone i don't even discuss it probably with my mom something of that sort yeah. even in uh, very recognized organizations who even science colleges for that matter for at least science people should not be you know shy about it but they are um so it is yeah. difficult of course probably the reason why these people started of something uh, just came to my mind was because the immunity of a women when she is menstruating is extremely low and in the older era uh, women used to do a lot of household work right which was uh, rigorous so yeah. probably those four days was sub- was when she was supposed to rest so probably they would have you know just yeah. asked her that you know you you be separate so that you don't have to work and you can get all the rest that you need i don't know i mean that could be one of the reasons <laughs> just so that she is safe and you know she takes some rest yeah. um but yeah so uh, we we did spoke to a few uh, a lot actually we spoke to almost 3000 4000 students even working women for that matter and we did face this challenge initially people would not discuss it they used to be like you know ha theek hai okay we did not get very satisfactory answers initially and then we what we did was we tried to make them understand that you know this is something that we are trying to do because these are the problems and yeah. someone has to do it otherwise the environmental impact is going to be huge so i remember when i was in school we used to have these mhm uh, uh, awareness camps and only girls were allowed in that room so once we used to come out all the boys used to are raman is shaking her head so yeah <laughs> i'm sure you have faced that and all the guys would be like oh kya bataya tumhe what was it about why didn't they get us and then you know these people would give us free sanitary napkins just to promote their brand and we used to hide it and get it inside and you know just put it in the bag and these people would be like hame to nahi diya this is not fair and so on and so forth so uh, that was a big drawback i believe men should also be allowed maybe you could tell them separately if you want to begin with but then they should also know about it probably if they are aware about it this this taboo thing will not really you know be a problem later uh, but yeah things are changing so last uh, last year during the semhm campaign we conducted men in menstruation uh, wherein we had targeted a couple of uh, colleges wherein we had interviewed people uh, we had set awareness campaigns and everyone was allowed so somehow uh, the guys were more active compared to girls and that was something which was wonderful 
so yeah. yeah something of that sort should be done i believe but yeah things I, are changing now i love the term men in menstruation <laughs> <laughs> that's a very interesting point you brought up na because uh, it is important that we go to the root cause of the taboo and that is this huge separation that is always there okay if it's a female centric topic then okay just like hide it from men don't get them in the conversation only right like rightly said yeah. rightly so um i'm curious to know um i don't know where exactly you guys operate is it urban india rural india or both do you think this is an urban problem a rural pro- problem is it you know an india centric problem is it a global problem how do you look at this problem i would love to get an idea about how big you think this problem is what you know what is the what we are doing wrong what is possibly the right way and what are you all doing to change um uh, not just the you know the current landscape but also the mindset yeah so uh, our market is where there is a woman so we are everywhere we are we have a global market because menstruation is never going to stop we are not going to use yeah. uh, stop going to use sanitary napkins or tampons or any other emission products um yeah. so that is the market and uh, we currently we are operating in pune mumbai uh, delhi and bangalore uh, we are also there in a couple of uh, cities like nashik rudrapur which are nearby to the other locations and we are expanding in hyderabad and chennai as well in the in the coming months uh, but yeah. yes in the long run we would be going global uh, it is not like we are only focusing on sanitary napkins or uh, or one kind of sanitary napkin napkin we can dispose of any kind of sanitary napkin today uh, yeah. we uh, we can also do tampons that is also not an issue uh, we are also working on diapers so like you rightly said the components are pretty similar it's just that the uh, volume of the material that is being used changes uh, a bit right. minor iterations are there but yes not very different so we are also working on that and that is in the pipeline yeah. and can you just describe your process a little bit uh, just so that viewers understand you know what it takes to actually dispose of a sanitary pad or a tampon or in the future maybe diapers sure so uh, the basic components of sanitary napkins or even tampons for that matter is cellulose plastic and super absorbent polymer uh, cellulose is something like a cotton plastic is the back sheet that you see uh, basically for waterproofing and super absorbent polymer is uh, you must have heard about you know magic gel technology during the advertisements so uh, that yeah. is what is super absorbent polymer uh, it basically absorbs you know 300 to 500 times its weight so it has a swelling technology you must have seen the hydrogel balls uh, that we have in our house for decorations and stuff similar to those is Correct. super absorbent polymer which absorbs your blood or urine and so on um, so these are the three basic components which are there and what we basically do is that um, we are segregating the cellulose and plastic out of it and we are using it for recycling so uh, we have developed a 5d patented technology wherein the 5d's are disinfection deodorization decolorization disintegration and deactivation of super absorbent polymer um so what we basically do is we have installed uh, pad care bins inside individual cubicles in the washroom so we are targeting b2b organizations like the corporates or educational institutes uh, just because segregation is easier there so for now we, we are we have targeted those uh, these pads are then collected on fortnightly or monthly basis depending upon the client's requirement and since the collection frequency is long we have in, we have introduced a padcare wrap technology which goes inside the bin it basically gives you the bacterial lock it controls the odor so you can store these pads for up to 45 days without any uh, unhygienic uh, an unhygienic environment being created inside the washroom so once we collect it we get it to our facility where in the liner that comes from the bin uh, directly goes into our main processing unit and the output that you get is cellulose and plastic so this cellulose and plastic is uh, ex- of extremely good quality because whenever you are using any product in hygiene industry it has to be extremely good there are certain standards for it they have to be virgin uh, so even so once we are you know getting those done the, the cellulose and plastic that we are also obtaining uh, the quality is not really degraded this then we are using for making different products so from cellulose we are making plant pots uh we are uh, introducing them in the packaging material so they uh, i might have I, i'll show you a couple of products later so uh we can make yeah, uh, yeah, ma- yeah so we can make packaging material out of it we have made notepads uh, diaries pencils out of it um 
so that is with the cellulose even in agri industries this, these could be used uh, plastic on the other hand so we have made table tops paper blocks out of it uh, so yeah those are a couple of applications that we are currently working on and we are still exploring more Thanks. So, uh, one thing that came to my mind was that earlier generations, they used, like this I've heard from my aunts and all, that they used cloths instead of sanitary napkins. So do you think that sanitary napkins is a problem that has been somewhere um, uh, become a product of consumerism and corporations trying to bring something which wasn't required or which could have been dealt in a more organic manner? Um, so the thing is that, of course, those products were more sustainable because it was in the end, it was cotton, it was cellulose, it was organic. Uh, wherein now we are introducing things like plastic and super absorbent, absorbent polymer in it. But uh, in the older times, it was okay because the ladies or the women or the girls, they used to stay at home. They could change it. But now we have to go to school. We have to go to office. It is not possible for us to, you know, constantly keep changing all those things. Where are you going to wash that cloth? You can't carry it home, right? So it, it was required. It is not like they just made it. They wanted some new product, some new market to be established. It is not the thing. It was the need was there. Um, so I think eventually, initially, the sustainability, the environment part was not very much into someone's head, right? Uh, now that it has started coming up, people are introducing biodegradable pads as, as well. There are a couple of companies who are making uh, pads from bamboo fiber, banana fiber, which is uh, which they are claiming to be biodegradable. There are again menstrual cups uh, which are made up of silicone and could be used for a period of say almost 12 years. So you just need to uh, use it. Once you're done, you could sterilize it in a boiling water or there are even uh, sterilizing devices available for menstrual cups. So right. things are changing. It is not like they just wanted to develop a market for it. There was a need. I, I a, a word that really highlighted out of that entire thing was claiming to be. Do you think that they're not entirely sustainable? Is there, I mean, do you have another take on that? So compared to the existing products, they are much better uh, environmental in, in the sense of being environment friendly. So uh, a couple yeah. of companies claim that, you know, they could be degraded in say three months, four months. So if you compare it with something like 800 years, of course, this is much better. Uh, so yeah but yeah. the disadvantage majorly is the cost because these pads are expensive uh, and people have mm -hmm. somehow been very comfortable so this is this is very critical actually uh, so if i am using say a uh, ex, ex uh, sanitary napkin from a couple of years i am somehow comfortable with it and even if i have to switch i'll think 100 times what if it changes i would be in the office what am i going to do everyone will know you know so all those things come Correct. to the mind so it is all I, I'll always think that you know it is better. this is working fine no it is okay so I, I mean but a lot of things that you guys are doing or uh, resonates with me um you know with something that we are very passionate about which is the circular economy right um instead of yeah. actually creating new things something that Raman touched upon which is consumerism and you know wanting new products uh, instead of just creating them is there a way that we can recycle back these components and make new things with it it need not be the same thing, but can we at least use it again? I love that you guys are making things like flower pots and you know using plastic for various other products. Um, but how do you educate the the average consumer? Because I mean, for you, any woman is essentially someone who can give you your raw materials or some you know can contribute to what you guys are doing. And there's a lot of R and D that you all have taken to develop this entire process. But how do you actually bring them into the fold? Do they require convincing or is it just, you know, a simple emotional connect to say, hey, you know, you can contribute more to, to the environment. You know, is there some sort of incentive that they require? What do you think or through your experience have you seen to convince people to be part of this entire process? Yeah, um, that is a very good question. So when we started with the surveys initially, uh, even we had the same questions that if, if uh, so uh, whenever you know we are doing this i initially i try try to keep myself you know what would my perspective be um yeah. of course you cannot just rely on one person's perspective so you have to do a survey you have to understand different mindsets uh, but we did talk to people about it that you know uh, do you really need this kind of product or are we you know just thinking uh, thinking of something and you know going ahead with it but uh, one of the major challenges that girls face in the washroom is 
uh, unavailability of disposal facility like we discussed about the taboo thing uh, yeah. people are not really comfortable you know carrying the sanitary napkin out in, uh, out of the washroom and then disposing it in front of others or in a public location correct so uh, what they do is they'll put it on the wall behind the uh, commode on the uh, you have the exhaust thing right they'll put yeah. it there or they'll flush it just so that people don't know about it um so those are the kinds of problems that are not just there from the user's perspective but also from the cleaning staff's perspective because eventually they have to come they have to pick it up or they have yeah. to clean the clogging that has happened and so on and so forth so uh, so this was one school that we had conducted a survey with we also uh, ran a, ran a pilot there uh, later um so these were some of the problems and eventually the washroom used to start stinking because of course the microbial load inside the washroom is going to increase the flies and everything and if the cleaner is not coming uh, you know just within, well within the time frame it used to get really bad yeah um so uh, eventually when we told them that you know we'll have these bins for you inside the washroom so that there is no issue for, uh, for you to you know come out dispose it or carry it or so on so uh, they were like fine let's do it let's test this out and then we did install and uh, so uh, this pilot we ran for a year and recently uh, we were like now it is over you know now we are getting the bins out and they asked their authorities to you know that we want those bins back we don't know what you're going to do but we want those bins back so it was a small school they did not have a lot of budget though uh, the pilot ran for a year and that was uh, not directly funded by them but now they are paying for it Though the uh, not with uh, the complete capacity, but yes, the girls made the school do it for them. Uh, yeah. And this is not an issue only in schools. Even in big IT corporates, such things happen. So you can imagine the kind of issues these girls face. And, but they don't talk about it because come on, menstruation is something that you should not talk about. It's something we are taught from the very beginning. Yeah. I I mean I'm I'm completely blown away by whatever you're saying because I we. As a as a company, LumaWorld thinks a lot about uh, product design. You know, okay, what is the user going to experience? And I can think of so many challenges that would come right from, let's say, market education, just to get them to understand. Um, because you you know, a lot of times you don't know who the cleaner is going to be. You don't even know how if they are going to dispose it in the right manner. Or are they going to take it out in the right way? If someone has not disposed it correctly, and not doing that might be a huge problem. Apart yeah. from that, you know, what is your entire cycle going to be you know getting it from the source to this but in a safe manner um you know there's so many constraints with the with the with the person you're relying on because once again this is a taboo they can't talk about it like you're saying they can't show it they can't talk about it they can't discuss it no one will claim ownership for it hey you know what yeah. I, i'm the one who did it so or i'm the one who saw it or you know it's so many ux issues like the user experience needs to be perfect or if you see it out there or if it's there that's a problem or uh, the user design needs to be so good that it shouldn't contaminate. Uh, wherever you are putting it, you shouldn't cause greater harm than it would be otherwise. I'm I'm completely amazed at how you guys manage it. So definitely kudos to that. <laughs> so apart from uh, like you mentioned that with females, it's difficult to understand also, and it's difficult to explain to them also that what can be done, but. Um, on a larger uh, level, do you think it's just a female-led initiative where this awareness needs to go only till females? Or do you think, you mentioned earlier that we as a society in general segregate men when it comes to this, but what can be done specifically when it comes to menstruation? What kind of awareness can we give to men as well? Or what role can they play in this whole cycle? So, um... Firstly, people should understand that, you know, this is as normal as you or me breathing or, you know, like just like respiration or excretion, menstruation is just a part of a normal human body and there, it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. It shouldn't be a taboo. Uh, unless and until people don't understand that it is extremely difficult. Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, I don't know if, uh, so uh, me along with, I, I have discussed it, discussed this with one of my, uh, a couple of my co colleagues, my friends that, you know, whenever in the ninth standard, we used to have this topic about menstruation in the biology book. And somehow that part used to be eliminated. That, you know, we are not going to talk about it. So <laughs> that is the first thing that should be stopped because it needs to be discussed. 
probably if we started from school itself these things will not become a taboo later people will get used to it eventually that you know this thing happens this is natural this is bound to happen and it should happen so that could probably be the first yeah. step <laughs> to you know include men in, men in the menstruation process uh, and apart from that probably something the uh, even many ngos they are conducting awareness camps uh, surveys and everything regarding menstruation but still men do not participate uh, because of the existing taboo uh, probably some initiatives you know by including them that you know this is not just for them you should come to you should know what is happening to your sister or to your wife uh, you should not be shunning them from the society for those four days and so on so probably people will have to take initiatives initially uh, and the ninth standard book thing should be something that could be an ice breaker in that case um, i guess the next set of questions um since you do you know a lot of the business side of things as well um i had a few questions about you know how how do you look at this going forward you know like how are you planning to scale up uh, how big a challenge it is to scale up um you know bring more people into fold that means organizationally and you know operationally it's a massive massive challenge how do you guys overcome that and uh, how do you ensure that you know it's it's seamless throughout yeah um so currently we just have one processing unit which is here in pune um but we have four more manufacturing units which are uh, four more uh, processing units which are under manufacturing right now uh, which would be placed across different locations uh, so that those will be much bigger probably city level plants uh, which could take care of the whole uh, at least one city and a couple of nearby cities as well um the issue is that uh, with the housing societies housing societies is something wherein we could have uh, a, a, a huge chunk of sanitary napkins coming from so any women would always prefer you know changing sanitary napkins at home rather than in a public washroom so that is something that we are trying to tap Correct. but again there is a lot of taboo so there was this red dot campaign which started in pune a couple of years ago and the concept was that you need to you know uh, wrap your sanitary nap napkin in a normal newspaper just like we do it now and put a red dot on it uh, with a sketch pen pen mm -hmm. lipstick or whatever you want but a red dot uh, so what it would do is that whenever you're handing it over to the uh, waste pickers they would know that you know okay this has sanitary napkins and i need to handle it differently uh, in that case probably they will not have to open the newspaper and see what is there inside and then put it and the interaction would be much lower so the concept is extremely nice but somehow when i am disposing it the people who are coming to collect at my place uh, are collecting uh, dry waste and wet waste i may not give them my sanitary napkins differently because they would know that you know i am on my period so that taboo thing again comes there so <laughs> that is an issue and uh, but we are trying different kinds of operational model wherein people people's privacy would be maintained uh, so something that we learned during this process was that you know in this case you cannot change users behavior if you are trying to do that you may not succeed it is always better to align with what their existing practices are and give them a better solution so we are trying a couple of uh, different yeah. operational models uh, which would maintain their privacy uh, which would still give them uh, a, a solution to disposing it in a sustainable manner so those things are in line uh, so that is how we are trying to tap the housing complexes um, eventually we are also talking to a couple of municipal corporations for setting up uh, a district level plant or a state level plant and so on and so forth um, so those things are in line so that that is for india and eventually in the global uh, at the global level also um, at least in ma uh, major countries like at least especially in us you don't have us or european market the taboo is not so much if you go to africa again the situation is pretty similar um, yeah. but india is something wherein we are currently you know trying to understand all kinds of kinds of prop possible problems trying to find a solution to all those before going global uh, of course there would be differences but then at least we'll have you know some background of you know okay this problem ha has come up okay we know how to deal with it you know it is not a very big issue so something mm -hmm. of those things are happening 
Um, another problem that comes up is, like you mentioned, that uh, the products which they are claiming to be environmentally friendly, they are very expensive. So how do you, how do we make the whole process balanced such that we are taking care of the hygiene, but we're also taking care of the environmental friendliness and the affordability of the products or this whole process as well? So uh, whenever you are introducing new products in market, initially they are going to be expensive, right? Eventually the cost will come down. So hopefully the biodegradable pads one day will also be much cheaper. Let's hope for that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, alternatives, uh, of course, menstrual cup is a very good alternative to that. Uh, it just needs behavioral change, but that is a sustainable option. It is extremely affordable. Uh, a single menstrual cup costs in the range of around uh, 200 to 500 rupees and you can use it for 12 years. So if you imagine that way, it is much, much, much cheaper than even the existing non biodegradable biodegradable sanitary napkins that you get. Uh, but this is a very sensitive topic. People will not talk about it. They will not discuss. They will not try to switch. But eventually things will happen and things are changing uh, even today. Do you get a lot of support from corporations, like big corporations? Absolutely. In fact, uh, the we, with PadCare, the technology was developed uh, based on the grant that we had received from the central government. So the whole technology was grant based. And uh, so government is definitely supportive. We are speaking to different uh, government bodies uh, for different approvals as well, for different certifications as well. You know, just this will help us to expand uh, much faster. Um, yeah. And in fact, uh, with a couple of municipal corporations who were not really aware about it when we spoke to them, they were so fascinated with it. And they were like, this is something, you know, that we have been struggling, struggling with. We have a solution to everything but sanitary napkins and diapers. Mm -hmm. So they are supportive. They are, you know, trying to implement and we are talking to a lot of municipal corporations right now. That's great. And uh, what about big corporations? Is there a role of CSR and things like that in it? Absolutely. Um, many organizations, we are running a couple of CSR projects with a couple of uh, corporates. Um, those are basically on the school level uh, for uh, so a couple of government schools were involved in this and the funding was coming from the corporates uh, but yes and we do get uh, it is not just from the corporates but even many ngos are getting into this um so yeah we are running a couple of csr projects in this domain already okay um how can i tell more people about this and you know, whether it's my uh, cousins, my uh, wife, my wife's friends, uh, my my parents, you know, people in my building, anyone. How how can I let them know that something like this is there? How do they get in touch with you? How do they reach out to you? Um, so we do have a website. We are there on LinkedIn. We are also there on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So you can just reach out to us from there. Or uh, of course, I can share the details with you as well, and you could share it in your network. Yeah, and we uh, so put it in the description. Yeah, 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 yeah but, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, what about if I'm a housing society and I want to, you know, be more responsible towards um, the environment, making sure that, you know, the sanitary hygiene is maintained and I want to dispose it off in the right manner. And you, of course, every housing society has got a bunch of women who are, you know, going to resonate with this problem as well. So how would someone like that get in touch with you? Is it the same way? Is there any, any way else that they sign up? Um, no, you can just reach out to us from the same platform and we have some really exciting operational models that we have come up with for housing societies and we are looking for people uh, for societies wherein we could, you know, try this out, test this out, get their feedback and improve. Great. Yeah. And uh, now I'm going to ask you a few personal questions. I, I mean, first and foremost, with the work that you're doing, uh, who's your role model? You know, um, who, who do you really look up to? Is it someone in this space or is it someone outside? So uh, I really admire Kiran Majumdar Shaw. She was uh, so biotechnology or microbiology is not very well established in India. If you go elsewhere, you know, there's a people do say right, before, you know, you're graduating or you're looking for your own particular course. Are you have scope? Hai, yaha nahi hai. Don't do this. Yeah. Don't go for that. So biology uh, or biotechnology or microbiology is something which falls under that category that you know you don't have many things to do in India. 
but uh, she is a lady who de- who you know established biocon from scratch who is yeah. into all this and i really really admire her from where she started to where she has brought biotechnology into and uh, so uh, nowadays when you you know someone says that you know biotech mein scope hi nahi hai why are you doing it you know people say that you know biocon there is this industry in bangalore which is very big i can get a job there so you know there is something that now people could you know defend themselves and say that you know no no i am doing the right thing so i really admire her for you know getting biotechnology so established in here and and that was actually going to be one of my questions to you since you you've got a bachelor's in microbiology and a master's in biotechnology are you using any of that in here or do you plan to use it into um uh, what you're doing currently uh yes i have been using it uh, so coming from a microbiology background and the use sanitary napkin has blood right so it has yeah. this whole lot of microorganisms which is there and you just yeah. cannot segregate the material and recycle it you need to disinfect it you need to remove the uh blood from it you need to remove the odor from it and that is something which uh is my background uh, as a microbiologist or a biotechnologist uh, where I, wherein i have de- uh, i have developed this with my team uh so basically my team what we do is that uh, we are converting this into making it fit for recycling so w- whenever we are handing this over to the vendors or a couple of uh, things we are making in house it shouldn't happen that you know it is not disinfected it you know it is unhygienic and all those things are just not acceptable in this case uh, so that yeah. is something that my team and i have been working on great what is one message that you would like to or advice that you would like to give our viewers so uh, firstly i would say that you know menstruation is normal talk about it try and understand the kind of problems that you know your friends or your sister or even your mother is facing uh it is extremely normal just like you breathe you menstruate so that is one thing and to a couple of uh, entrepreneurs aspiring entrepreneurs i would say that you know uh, uh startup culture in india is developing this is the right time wherein you could invest government is coming up with a lot 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 of schemes uh, fundings and everything this is the right time wherein you can start so take risk and and just do it. it it really feels amazing and i i'm sure you guys can also relate to that so yeah yeah um i i have a follow up question to what raman asked and do you have any message for young kids like young boys and girls because um i i mean men and women possibly have a, at least a fair understanding of what menstruation is and you know how important it is and you know how it can impact uh, you know if you just throw sanitary but what about young kids who are growing up and don't have an idea about anything like this any any advice to them both young girls and young boys maybe separately so um probably in this case it is uh, the ball is in the court of the young girls you know wherein they could actually talk to their friends and explain that that you know this is something that happens to me every month yeah. and this is why it happens probably you know uh, people of the same age they get along well so it yeah. might there's a possibility wherein they could really understand this rather than some one else telling them that you know hey this is this is something you know that happens probably peer to peer learning would be much easier so probably girls should you know take the initiative they should talk to their friends they should make them understand the importance of it uh, so yeah great um as a final thing we've got a rapid fire round for you just to you know end things on a lighter note <laughs> So what's the one thing at home that you will you can never throw away uh you can just never dispose of Okay so uh like it is on a personal level right Yeah yeah so I have this uh necklace which my dad had given me when I was very young and it is all broken now but i can't throw it away so i have still kept it it is in five pieces but it is still there in my box okay that's great <laughs> yeah would you go on a date with your favorite celeb or would you ask them to give you a shout out about the work that you do a shout out would be better i mean that has more gains <laughs> and who is that celeb going to be maybe akshay kumar i think he is already into this and he saying something like this you know might just be a big boom okay 
<laughs> would you still stick to Akshay Kumar if you had to go on a date with him or is it going to be someone else? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I just got engaged, so I would rather go with my fiance than going with a seven. So great. So you got your shout out and you got good company also. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So thank you so much, Asavri, for joining us on World Menstrual Hygiene Day and uh, being part of the Luma World podcast. A lot of great insights into the work that you do and uh, the work that Pad Care Labs is striving um, you know, to change within uh, our, our society, not just Indian society, but global society as well. And uh, a lot of great points that you mentioned. Um, we love your process. We love the R&D that you guys have gone into. And uh, thank you so much once again.